please join your voices for our entrance hymn on page two of your program. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. <laughs> Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn to page three.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of the Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon and Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. joy to the Lord, O oh, you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. to be trusted. The Lord loves 
justice and right, and his merciful love fills the eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It had already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. <clears throat> the sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, but the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Campbell, welcome to St. Paul's. Thank you. Thank you for coming among us today to administer the sacrament of confirmation. It's always good to have you here. At this time, I would like to ask those who are going to be confirmed to stand, please. Bishop, I am happy to present to you those whom you will confirm today on behalf of their parents, teachers, sponsors, and parish priests, I am able to tell you that they are prepared to receive this sacrament. Thank you, Father. The 
You may be seated. My dear candidates and my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, before I proceed to the administration of the sacrament of confirmation, the Church asks us to pause momentarily so that we might consider what it is that we do here this morning, what the sacrament of confirmation confers upon these candidates and what it will ask of them. To do this, I want to turn your minds momentarily to the season that we are celebrating. Just over two weeks ago, we completed the celebration of the Paschal Mystery, that mystery of the suffering and dying and rising of our Lord Jesus Christ and marked his resurrection with a feast day which is the most important in our church's calendar and is the turning point of all human history. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so fundamental is this to our faith that the church stretches out this Easter celebration for 50 days so that we might understand ever more deeply what has occurred in that profound gift of the Lord Jesus' dying and rising and how it touches our lives. And throughout this Easter season, the Church, in its readings, selects passages from two particular parts of the New Testament the Gospel of John, and the Acts of the Apostles. And as we listen to these two readings, there are two persistent questions that are asked of us. The first, do you know who this Jesus Christ is? and how he is present to us now? And in answer to that question, we read through the Gospel of John, that Gospel that penetrated ever more deeply into the heart of the mystery of Christ. And through his resurrection, we began to understand what he has taught us. The second question, how do we now conform our lives according to the life of Jesus Christ? How do we imitate him? To help us answer that, we have those marvelous readings from the Acts of the Apostles, the account of how the very earliest disciples of Christ lived out his reality, lived it out with power and courage and deep knowledge. For as St. Peter was to proclaim in Jerusalem, there is no other name in heaven or on earth by which we are saved than the name of Jesus Christ. And we read carefully how those disciples lived, how they preached, and how they spread the word of God. For this is life, and life everlasting. But my dear candidates, St. Paul tells us in his first letter to the Corinthians that no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. And it is in the gift of the Holy Spirit that those two questions can enter our minds and hearts and change our lives. It is a gift of a spirit that 
our Lord promised at the Last Supper when he said to the disciples, once I have been lifted up, I have been ascended to my heavenly Father, I will send you another advocate, a spirit who will remind you of all that I have taught you and will bring you to all truth. And it is the fulfillment of that promise that we remember and celebrate today. Now you candidates have already been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit in your baptism. When under the sign of water the Spirit hovered above you, forgiving sins, drawing you into the body of Christ, which is the Church. But today the Spirit will be visited upon you under the sign of sacred chrism. That chrism that was used in the Bible to anoint priests, prophets, and kings. And who will anoint you for your particular mission in this world and within the Church. Now candidates, I suspect that as you were preparing for this sacrament, you heard about the seven traditional gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if I were to ask you what those are, you could tell me. Correct? Oh, just nod your heads. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but I want to tell you of a gift of the Holy Spirit that comes before all others. And that is to give the gift to know Jesus Christ present and to be able to shape your lives according to his. Now, over the many years that the Church has celebrated this powerful sacrament, it has celebrated it often with certain signs and gestures that were used to indicate the meaning of this sacrament. When I was confirmed, and it was on April the 24th, a couple of years ago, <laughs> the bishop who confirmed me used a gesture that I suspect that members of this congregation, who are at least my generation, will remember. The bishop slapped me. Now, that was a gesture used to indicate that we were to be a miles Christi, a soldier of Christ, bold, strong, courageous in our faith. The Church still calls us to be bold, strong, and courageous in our faith, although it no longer asks me to use that gesture, <laughs> although I have received requests from other quarters to restore it. <laughs> but my dear candidates, Bishop Carney, who is the Bishop of Rochester, New York, who confirmed me, did something else that very deeply impressed me. He wanted us candidates to understand that as confirmed Catholics, we were called to give witness to our faith. So he came down in front of us to examine us on the catechism. He did not ask for volunteers. He would say, young man, can you tell me the ranks of the sacrament of holy orders? Or young lady, can you tell me the three goods of marriage? And I sat there praying God he would ask me to define a sacrament. I had that down cold. <laughs> but my dear candidates, as your bishop, I do not want you to miss the joy of that experience. So let's get started. <laughs> so my dear candidates, unlike the bishop who confirmed me, I shall ask for volunteers. If I get none, I shall have to start pointing. But let me ask. First of all, a very simple question. What is the meaning of the word confirmation? Just the word, not the sacrament. What is the meaning of the word confirmation? Back here? Yeah. Okay, well, what is the root word of confirmation? 
firm. Thank you. And what other words come to mind when you hear the word firm? Yes. Strong. Strong. Durable. Excellent. Any others? So that exhausts the vocabulary here. <laughs> well, firm, strong, durable, in what? What are we to be strong for? Yeah. Our faith. Our faith. Thank you. So let me ask you about that faith. Who is Jesus Christ? Now, you've heard the name, right? OK. Yeah. OK. He is God's son, came to earth to forgive our sins. Anything else? Haven't had much action from this side. Yes. Our Lord and Savior. Look at that word, Lord. It's a translation of the Latin word dominus, from which we get dominate. What does it mean to us when we say, Jesus Christ is my Lord? What does that mean to us? Yes. We should follow his footsteps. And how do we know what those footsteps are? Before we can follow, we have to do something else. Yes. Well, self-reflect, but that's after doing what? What is the first thing that our Lord called us to do? Well, we gather as one because we've already done something else. It's very simple. It's no trick question. It involves a particular part of our body. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we evangelize afterwards, but the first thing we do, and we use this, what is it we must do? Listen. That is why we began all our worship with listening to the word of God. And how often our Lord in his parables would say, those who have ears, hear. And then in hearing, we follow in his footsteps. We gather as one. We evangelize. Where do we meet Jesus here and now? Where do we meet this living Lord? Yes. Through the sacraments? And another part, yes. In the Eucharist? In what parts of the Eucharist? Well, I already mentioned one, the yes. In the body and blood, but there's another way that comes before that, that we encounter Jesus. We already did this morning. Yes. In the gospel, in all the scripture readings. And remember that no matter who reads the scripture, the lector, the deacon, the priest, or the bishop, it is always Jesus Christ who addresses us. Let me become a little more specific. What is the first commandment that we receive from God through Moses? Yes. I'm the Lord your God, and then there's something else to it. Good. I'm the Lord your God, you shall not have false gods before me. And what are the false gods that we can have before the true God? Okay. Idols, like what? We don't worship Zeus and Minerva or whatnot. But yes, go ahead, uh, right here. Oh. Okay, before uh, anything we put before God, more specifically, yes, right back there. Technology, aha. 
You know, uh, candidates, you have a temptation that my generation did not have. Lord knows we had enough. <laughs> But I, I like to tell people that I use my thumb to anoint, not to <laughs> Candidates, be very careful of those gadgets you can hold in your hand. Do not be caught in the web. What is the third commandment that our Lord gave to us through Moses? Oh, we, yes, please. That's number four. Okay, what's number three? Right back here. Keep the Sabbath holy. And how do we do that as Catholics? Yes. Uh, well, we not only come to church, but we attend what? We attend Mass on what day? Sunday. And what, uh, there's something else about Sunday that we sometimes forget. Yeah. Sunday is a day of rest. Now, that doesn't mean a 17-hour nap. Uh, <laughs> just ask any priest. Uh, but it means a day of refreshment, of giving off the normal activity to renew ourselves spiritually, to renew our relationships, especially in the family. But what is the one commandment that carries with it a blessing? Can you tell me? You just did. The commandment, yes. Honor your father and mother. Do you know what the blessing is? Okay. Well, I'll let you look that one up. You know, there. I always like to refer to the two first questions that were asked of me when my mother was teaching me my catechism. The first question, who made you? Now every hand should go up. This is more than a guess. Who was it? God made me, right. Why did God make you? You know back here? To know him, to love him, to serve him. Okay, to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world and to be forever happy with him in the next. Good. One last question. What are the names of the first 25 popes? <laughs> well, they were doing so well. <laughs> But let me go back to that second question of the catechism. Why did God make you? God made you to know him, love him, and serve him. To know him. Candidates, confirmation calls you to know your faith well. To live it deeply. To be able to explain it and, if necessary, to defend it, which is becoming more important in our own time. To love him. Every day of your lives, in some fashion or other, to turn your minds and hearts to God in a loving conversation we call prayer. And Sunday by Sunday, holy day by holy day, to join the church in offering the greatest prayer that we offer, which is this Holy Eucharist. To be nourished by the Word of God, to be fed on the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Candidates, this is our lifeblood. Remain close to it. For without the Eucharist, our spirits will wither and die. And to serve him. To serve God by serving anyone in any material or spiritual need. And especially to see on the face of the poor the very face of Jesus himself. And finally, my dear candidates, I ask you to listen very carefully. For in the coming weeks and months and years, the Holy Spirit will speak into your hearts and minds and will reveal to you the life that God is asking you to lead. Listen carefully. 
For I'm convinced that unless you know your vocation and you embrace it with joy and generosity, you will never be truly happy. So candidates, I ask you once again to stand. <clears throat> candidates, some years ago, your parents and godparents brought you to church to be baptized, to be cleansed of sin and to be made a part of the body of Christ. At that time, the church baptized you on the basis of their profession of faith. Today, I ask you to renew those baptismal promises on your own by responding, I do, to each of these questions. And so, candidates, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Oh, well, that was all right. Uh, but this is such a fine group and numerous. I think we can do better in proclaiming that faith to the whole town. So let me ask you again, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? I do. Much better. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Now don't weaken, I've got one more. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, in baptism, God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. And I'm going to ask your pastor, Father Klinger, to join me in the invocation of the Holy Spirit as he will assist us in the anointing. Thank you. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water in the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Let us stand now to offer these prayers to our Heavenly Father. <laughs> In the stormy times of our lives, we can be assured that God is with us and we need not fear. With our lives solidly rooted in Christ, we can face any challenge. We need only to trust in the Lord. We pray for the Church, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, she may continue to seek ways of, to alleviate the suffering of the poor and work to bring positive change in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for world leaders, that they may recognize the importance of faith for people's lives and allow them to worship freely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those tested so much by life that they have lost their faith, that by our prayers they may be awakened by the Holy Spirit to the presence of the Lord of their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are ill in any way that the Lord may make his presence known and bring them unshakable hope, peaceful rest, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, especially the members of our immediate family and our parish family. May they have eternal life with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all here present, especially our confirmandi, that they may be blessed and filled with the Holy Spirit to guide them through their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for pouring out your abundant grace upon the needs we bring you, knowing them before we do. Please hear and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. To the Lord, Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you came unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Come here.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. I just want to make sure you are aware that there is a reception after the Mass downstairs in lower level three, a reception for those newly confirmed, so please plan to stop in there for a while. Thank you, Father. Before I offer the final blessing, I want to say one last thing to these newly confirmed young men and women. Always remember who you are. You are sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, by grace, brother and sister to our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been anointed by the Holy Spirit and destined for everlasting life. Never forget your dignity. Bring it unstained into the everlasting kingdom. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join your voices for our recessional hymn on page 9 of your program.
communion hymn can be found on page eight of your program. This one.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. I just want to make sure you are aware that there is a reception after the Mass downstairs in lower level three, a reception for those newly confirmed, so please plan to stop in there for a while. Thank you, Father. Before I offer the final blessing, I want to say one last thing to these newly confirmed young men and women. Always remember who you are. You are sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, by grace, brother and sister to our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been anointed by the Holy Spirit and destined for everlasting life. Never forget your dignity. Bring it unstained into the everlasting kingdom. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join your voices for our recessional hymn on page nine of your program. <laughs> 